Okay, I've opened up Stellarium. I'm looking at the sky. Um, this is Middlesbrough. It's about the middle of December. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Um, I'm going to get rid of the atmosphere so we can see the stars a little bit better. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of the ground so that we can see what's happening above and below the horizon. Uh, if I come out a bit, and when I say above and below the horizon, because um, what I'm interested today in is the sun. And here we see the sun is below my horizon because it's night time. I'm going to add uh, a few things to this. I'm going to add um, an equatorial grid so we can see right ascensions and declinations on the celestial sphere. There's the northern celestial pole up there. Um, I'll put it so that the celestial equator is going through the middle of the screen and one thing I can do with Stellarium is I can highlight the ecliptic and the equator. So this this blue line through the middle is the celestial equator which is directly above uh, the Earth's equator. The red line is the ecliptic and that is the path of the Sun throughout the year. So it's about the middle of December the Sun is well below. Uh, in fact in about a week's time in a week's time the Sun will be at its lowest point uh, below the celestial, celestial equator. It will be the winter solstice in about a week's time. One thing you should notice straight away is that uh, the planets are all pretty close to the ecliptic. They all happen to be kind of around where the Sun is at the moment, which is interesting. Not all of them, but certainly there's, there's Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus. Okay, so um, the planets can be found close to the ecliptic. Not exactly on the ecliptic because the orbits of the planets aren't uh, always on the ecliptic. Some of them are a little bit inclined. See Venus, the orbit of Venus is inclined a bit. Uh, the moon is pretty close to the ecliptic. Um, and they will take different times to go to round the ecliptic. Obviously uh, Mercury I believe the orbit of Mercury is about 86, 87 days it will take to go round, whereas Jupiter and Saturn will take years and years to go round. Mars will take certainly more than a year. Uh, now, what I can do is speed things up a little bit, but if I just speed it up like this, then we're not going to see a great deal. So that's not much use. So what I'm going to do is uh, choose a star which is pretty much on the celestial equator and I will get it so that that star stays in the middle of the screen. Okay, and then I will speed it up a little bit. See the north, east, south, west going round as the earth rotates. Uh, the tilting due to the tilt of the earth. Uh, and as I'm doing this, oh look the moon's getting pretty close. Are we going to get a, oh where's he gone? Where's he gone? Are we going to get a, an eclipse? No, eclipse, eclipse. No, didn't get an eclipse this time. If I stop it, you can see the the moon. 
didn't quite go in front of the sun. Never mind, no total eclipse this year. Darn, we'll have to wait another 100 years or so for that. Let's get back again. Let's get my, get my tilting going again. Center on that star. Um, might get a bit dizzy now as the days pass. Oh, the moon's long gone. Let's stop it now, see where we are. Uh, the sun is on its way back up, up the ecliptic, heading towards the celestial equator. Speed it up again. Give it another couple of weeks. And the sun's well on its way. Uh, Venus is obviously making very good progress. This point here is very important. This, this point here is called the first point of Aries. And it's where the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator. Um, when that happens, this, it'll be about March the 21st. And that will be the spring equinox or the vernal equinox. Um, when hours of daylight and night time are equal, the vernal equinox. It's also the, the zero hours, zero hours of right ascension. It's a little bit like our Greenwich in the sky, if you like, as longitude, zero longitude goes through Greenwich, zero of right ascension goes through the first point of Aries. If we have a look ar around the ecliptic, let's have a look around the ecliptic. Uh, in the middle of the summer, the sun will be at its highest above the ecliptic uh, at the summer solstice. Moving round. Uh, at this point here, the ecliptic goes through the celestial equator on it with the sun on its way down that's called the first point of Libra then the sun is uh, below the ecliptic again this happens on around September the 21st and here we can see the sun again if I speed it up again we're going to get dizzy again let's center on that star come out a bit and See the moon again, uh, oh, heading towards the sun. Uh, are we going to get? Are we going to get a total eclipse this month? Do you reckon? Let's see. There's there's the moon heading towards the sun. And let's have a look. No total eclipse. Maybe next month. Okay, so there's the celestial equator. There's the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun in the sky. And we have the first point of Aries. And we have the first point of Libra. And we can see that the planets are close to the ecliptic because the, the orbits of the planets are all pretty much close to the ecliptical plane, so it's not surprising from our viewpoint that we find them close to the ecliptic.